Hello everyone, Helen here. Thanks for popping in to see me and welcome or welcome back to everybody who's watching today. And uh, yes, a big welcome if you're new here. I live in Durham in the northeast of England and I spend part of my week piano teaching from home and the rest of my time, uh, oh, I do all sorts of things and lots and lots of different crafts and also going out and about and enjoying nature and visiting new places. And I just like sharing all of those things with you here. So today I am going to, uh, the two main things I'm chatting about today are my gnomes that I made last year, the 12 gnomes that I made. And I'm also gonna take you to see a beautiful doll's house. Um, but to start off with, I thought you might be interested to see uh, some of the craft related gifts that I received last December. So I have my birthday and Christmas in December. So yes, I got all sorts of lovely goodies and I thought you like, might like to see uh, the, the crafty ones. So this first craft related gift that you can see here is a paper craft activity to make a couple of paper dwarfs. <laughs> And it was a brilliant idea of my uncle Alan's. He lives in Australia, so he has to, you know, find things that are light to post. And he created these kits uh, to send to each of his relatives in England. And we're planning to have a bit of a family craft afternoon to make our dwarves all together. So watch this space. I'll probably show show you uh, when we when we do that. Um, this felt applique kit was bought for me by Phil, that's my husband, during our recent camper van trip. And it came from Rainbow Yarns in Rothbury in Northumberland. I so enjoyed my felt advent calendar. And so I'm really looking forward to making this. Uh, but I think I'll probably keep it for one of my Christmas in July projects. Uh, my mum surprised me with this Shetland Wool Week kit and it, it contains Laxdale yarn and I hadn't heard of it before, but it turns out that it's a, quite a new yarn and it comes from Shetland, from sheep that live on a croft that's owned by a couple called Sheila and Douglas. And I'm excited to get started on a new hat. Um, I do love the colours in the kit, they're, they're really lovely. This yarn here was uh, gifted to me by my cousin Audra, who also lives in Australia. And it, two balls of 100% alpaca and another of merino. And the merino's been dyed with eucalyptus leaves. And uh, yeah, this was spun by a friend of hers from using fleece from local alpacas. And I'm not sure yet what I'm going to make with it, but I'll let you know when I've decided. Another project that's been given to me, uh, this time by my lovely friend Margaret, who lives on the Isle of Skye, uh, is a pattern for a crocheted jumper. Um, I'm not, I'm not going to do the colours that are shown here in the pattern, but I'll, I'll look for some more natural tones, I think. Uh, Margaret also gave me this beautiful little turtle who's actually a tape measure. You have to pull his tail out for the measuring tape. And I also got this uh, ladybird book about knitting to add to my small collection of old books about yarn-related things. I remember having this book as a child and the last project in the book was definitely one that I made. Something else that I received this time uh, from my daughter Sarah was is this antique brass row and stitch counter which has got needle sizes down one side and measurement in inches along another and it's going to look great displayed in my craft room with one or two of the other old things that I've got. Sarah did a good job of uh, polishing it as well after she'd bought it. A few people uh, very kindly gave me gifts that they'd made themselves and I always really appreciate it because I know exactly how much time and love somebody has put into making things. This crocheted heart and bookmark and the beautiful tag too were made by my lovely friend Mariam in Belgium who does occasionally podcast on YouTube as The Pianix. And Mariam also made me this gorgeous Japanese knot bag uh, which is going to make an excellent little project bag. I think particularly for projects that I might take 
with me when I'm out and about because it slips very nicely over your wrist and uh, yeah great way of carrying a little project and I also love the very appropriate wrapping paper that Mariam used. <laughs> Uh, this lovely little bag was made for me by my lovely sister-in-law, Lorna, who I think would probably agree that she's still building her confidence as a knitter. Um, but this was her first ever attempt at cable knitting, and I think she's done a brilliant job. My daughter, Sarah, is a very talented embroiderer and made me this beautiful hoop to hang in my craft room. She often draws her own designs, but on this occasion she bought the pattern I think from a Ukrainian designer. I forgot to check before I started chatting to you. Uh, <laughs> finally, my mom crocheted me two beautiful new ornaments for my Christmas tree. This gorgeous swirly pattern in sparkly green and silver finished off with a little tassel. And this lovely long spiral ornament with three coordinated jingle bells hanging from the bottom. So I think you have to agree, I was a very, very lucky person to, to receive all those lovely things. So, yeah, so I think now on to my gnomes. So the the I joined in with this knit along because I'd always, already become a bit obsessed with making gnomes. But at the beginning of 2022, the designer of the gnomes, Sarah Shearer, who she does design other things, but I think she's probably best known for her gnome patterns. She had realised that she had, by that point, had designed 12 different gnomes. And so she thought in celebration of that, she would have a, a year long gnome knit along. Um, and you, you could knit one of each of the patterns uh, each month, but uh, there was no, no rules really. And I didn't try lots of new patterns. I mostly did the uh, never not gnoming pattern which is probably, it's almost the simplest one. I think there is a simpler one uh, for newer knitters, but uh, I did try a couple of uh, new ones as well. So I'll talk about them as I go along as I show you each of the gnomes in turn, and then I'll show you them all together when I took them out for a little photo shoot. <laughs> so my January gnome uses uh, DK yarn, and it was from a kit that uh, I bought from Lucy Lockett Land, and you'll hear that, that a few times because I did buy a few kits. Um, and I just, I love, I love it that the January gnome was, just seemed like a proper woodland gnome with, with these lovely earthy colours. In February um, was a pattern that was new to me and it was called Here We Gnome Again. Uh, I did find this quite tricky. I have done cables quite a lot of uh, quite a lot of times, but the the cabled hat took me so long to do that I chose not to do the cabling on the body and just do a plain body. Although I did do the fancy beard in March. Uh, this gnome uses some double knitting yarn that I actually won uh, in a giveaway by lovely Ange of the Yarn and Yarns uh, YouTube channel. And it just seemed appropriate to make it into a gnome because I think it was, yeah, I, th I think Ange had a had a gnome knit along for a little while as well. So yeah, the previous year, so that's why I got that. And so I added some felt shamrocks because of seventeenth of March being St Patrick's Day. In April, uh, this was another set of yarn set that I bought from Lucy Lockett Land. Some lovely hand dyed four ply. And I decided to do a stripy beard for the first time and I made a matching tassel for the hat. In May, uh, I used uh, some Stylecraft Special Chunky because I fancied uh, having a go at making a, a really big gnome. Uh, it didn't turn out quite as large as I was expecting. I could have found some even thicker yarn. Uh, but actually, I sort of wish I hadn't done a big one because he just... Oh, I don't know, he doesn't fit into the whole crowd of gnomes that I made. Never mind. I, I chose uh, patriotic colours uh, in anticipation of us celebrating the Queen's Platinum Jubilee in June. In June, uh, my gnome was inspired by uh, the summer solstice and I used various oddments of 
just sunny colours. Uh, the body is made from Sirdar click, but I'm not sure what the other bits and bobs are. I think they're probably Stylecraft Special DK. And I decided to embroid a, a sun symbol on his hat, which I rather like. For July, um, I know I'm was part of my Christmas in July makes. So yeah, I just chose some Christmassy colours and added some glass beads onto his hat and a bell on the top of his hat. And this was all made out of leftovers of DK yarn. In August, uh, again, more Stylecraft Special DK oddments to make a, a gnome with a rainbow hat and a stripy beard. So bright and summery. I think he was just really reflecting all of the colours of the summer flowers in the garden and out and about. So, yeah, he's rather nice. Uh, in September, this was my uh, second uh, new uh, gnome pattern of the year. And this one was called the Adventure Gnome, which I think had been one of the Advent Gnome knit alongs at one point. Not that I did, but um, it's the first gnome that I made who has legs and uh, a different kind of beard, which I failed at the first attempt, but second attempt, it, it worked out all right. And another difference is that the arms are just made as one piece. In October, I was definitely... Uh, influenced by the autumnal colours around me and uh, when I finished making the gnome uh, which oh yes I used I used mostly oddments of DK and a bit of hand spun yarn that I purchased on the Isle of Arran in Scotland uh, just for his beard uh, but, oh yeah so when I finished making him he was very plain and so I added some little tiny crocheted leaves and he, uh, it definitely made all the difference. I, I really liked him after that. Uh, well, November was very, very grey. It was particularly foggy last year in November. And so the colours of this gnome reflect the foggy days. I just used different shades of grey and uh, various bits of leftover yarn and um, a bit of sparkle in his body as well. And I took him out on a photo shoot on a foggy day as well. And then finally, we got to December, um, I chose some icy colours for my December gnome. Some sparkly scapias yarn for the hat, a um, bit of mohair for the beard and uh, some other four-ply hand dyed yarn for the body, which I'd had away in moustache for a little while, uh, which has got little spots of colour suggesting Christmas lights. So, yeah, I think that, I think that all came together very nicely. And... Um, if you were to ask me which is my favourite, he might be my favourite. So I took all the gnomes off into the woods on one of my walks and uh, took some photos of them all together. And so, yeah, you can see them here. And they do look rather nice. Um, I, I saw some photos on Instagram recently that, uh, that where people had used the same colour scheme the whole year and they did look really nice. They'd done different patterns. I think they'd done one, one of each pattern, but they'd done uh, the same set of colours each time. So they, they look really good. My, mine are definitely a random selection and uh, not a very sort of homogenous group, really. Yeah, so there we go. All 12 of my gnomes. Um, I'm not sure that I'm going to knit any gnomes at all this year, but I do have one or two crochet gnome patterns that I'd like to have a go at. So I can quite imagine that it won't be a year free of gnome making. <laughs> and of course, I've got my paper gnomes to make as well, or dwarves or whatever. Yeah, so uh, I am just going to finish off today by taking you to one of the places that we went on our camper van trip before Christmas. Wallington Hall and at Wallington Hall they have the most fantastic collection of dolls houses and uh, it, as a child I used to be taken there from time to time and that was my absolute favourite part of the whole trip. Um, I did used to like the walled garden there as well but in the house my favourite part was the room full of dolls houses so it was really lovely to go back and revisit them. And I was sure that lots of you would love to see 
the, the doll's houses there. And so I've just made a little video to show you um, one of the houses. And because we went before Christmas, um, the you can see little touches of Christmas in the in the doll's house too. This so so you can see I've just shown you inside one of them, but it's a very very big one. So I hope you're going to enjoy seeing inside it. Okay, well, I'm going to finish here for today and just wish you a lovely week full of busy and do take care of yourself as well. So I'll see you again very soon. Okay then, bye.